Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. Where you die, I will die, and there shall I be buried. That is the message I bring you from the people I know. I am not a representative of the people. The people I know and my family. You are not alone. Come stand with people that want you to know that. Thank you. That was one of the most um, uh, amazing weeks of my life, uh, one of the most amazing things I've ever done. I was speaking at the Knesset, which is the Israeli parliament, and I was invited to speak there by this man, Danny Danone. He's the deputy speaker of the Israeli Knesset. He is also the author of this book, Israel, The Will to Prevail. Danny is a friend of mine and a very um, clear individual. Welcome. Thank you, Granny. It's a pleasure to be here. Is this your first time in Texas? No, first Good. time in this lovely studio. Yeah, all right. Um, thank you for coming. I know you came all the way from Israel and it was a long flight. Um, um, let me start with um, that moment um, to me was important, but I don't know if it had any effect um, uh, on anything at all, except for the people that attended, they, I think, were changed forever. Does the average American who does stand with Israel, does it make any difference to people in Israel? Do they even hear that, that there it, are millions? It is very important for us, because sometimes people think that everybody is against us. We are about ourselves were isolated but when people come from the US and show support and stand with us and pray with us it gives us the courage we need and I tell the Israelis do not be afraid even if we have to stand up in front of the American president and tell him we do not accept what you want from us we know we have the backing from the American people there is Washington the White House and there is the rest of America and I know because I come a lot to the US mm -hmm. I know there is a lot of love to the people of Israel and we should not be afraid and the main point in my book, Israel the Will to Prevail, is that we should stand in front of President Obama and to tell him we are not doing what you want us to do. We are not giving land to the Arabs to appease them. We will not wait with Iran forever. And it is not easy. We are a very small state. We have a great relationship with the American people. But it is not easy to have difficulties like that. Have you ever, the president says, we've never had better relations with Israel and I'm thinking, really? I can say it very clearly. I'm not interfering with in American politics. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a proud Israeli. Mm -hmm. But President Obama was not a friend of Israel. He actually adapted all the demands of the Palestinians. In my book, I compare President Obama not to President Bush, to President Clinton, who spoke last night. He had a, a very nice and impressive speech for 48 minutes. But Clinton never told us in Israel, go back to the 1967 lines. He never told us, do not build in Jerusalem. President Obama actually took all the demands of the Palestinian and made it to be the U.S. policy. How do you read that he's never been to Israel? He's been, he's been everywhere, it is, never to Israel. It is very symbolic. He traveled. It's a long flight, by the way. He came a few hours ago from <laughs> Tel Aviv to Dallas. Yeah. It is a long flight. But he flew to Egypt. He flew to Saudi Arabia. Jordan. He flew to Turkey. He could have come. He should have come for a few hours to Jerusalem to stand with the people of Israel. Israel is the only reliable ally of the U.S. for generations, for years. Why he didn't do so, I don't know. But I think that we see that the policy, and we care about the policy, we see that he is not accepting what we want to do, to work together, mainly on the issue of Iran. The Iranian threat is not a threat only for Jews in the Middle East. It is a threat to you and to the American people. Listen to what they're saying. We will wipe out the Israelis first. But then we will go to the big Satan. We will come to the U.S. So we are in the front line. We have to deal with them first. But they are talking about the U.S. And it's in your backyard. Glenn, people say, NIMBY, not in my backyard. We don't care. The Middle East, different language. It is in your backyard. Because if Iran, God forbid, will become nuclear, it can hurt the people here in the U.S. Um, is Mitt Romney any better? I don't know. I think the American people will have to decide what is good for them. Okay. But I think that they have to know that if you treat your ally the way President Obama treats Israel, 
you're not getting stronger. Because look what's happening today to the U.S. Its enemies are not afraid anymore from the U.S. Oh, we're, 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 we, are, we are financially backing. Uh, I mean, is there any doubt in your mind at all that Morsi in Egypt um, is going for a caliphate, is, uh, is an extremist Muslim Brotherhood guy, that this is really bad for the U.S. and for Israel, what happened in Egypt. And look at the amount of money, we were the sending. amount of technology, of mm -hmm. weapons that the U.S. is giving to Egypt today. And that's why I say you have one reliable ally, work with it. So tell me what the average, because here, here's, here's what people don't understand. Um, a, are you asking us to defend you? I'm asking you to defend yourself. You have to understand it. You're defending yourself. Israel is the cheapest army force you have in the Middle East. We don't ask you to come to fight with us. But when you see what's happening in Iran, you cannot ignore it. Glenn, you, you have been to Europe, to Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. And when you go there, you ask yourself, how come nobody did anything? Why did the U.S. bombers didn't bomb the death camps? And today, when you see Ahmadinejad building five nuclear bombs, as we speak, it's coming to the U.N. every September. By the way, you and the American people are giving a lot of money to the U.N. to host Ahmadinejad. And he goes back to Iran and he's building another bomb. I think it's something we, we have to do ourselves. And if the U.S. is not willing to support us and to stand with us, it's not easy. So what I'm asking you is because what, what Benjamin Netanyahu has told me on several occasions, I am not looking for you to put boots on the ground. I am looking for you to say we have a right to live, that we have a right to exist. He's, he's saying that there's got to be some moral backbone in the United States of America to say, Israel, you have the right to defend yourself. If you look at history, and in my book, I analyze the relationship between Washington and Jerusalem, starting from Truman until today with President Obama, we have to do it without asking for permission. In the 80s, Prime Minister Menachem Begin decided to attack the nuclear reactors in Iraq. He was condemned by the U.S. He was condemned by the U.N. But 10 years later, people said, thanks God, there are no new reactors in Iraq anymore because you, the U.S., invaded Iraq 10 years later. So we should take the decision. We do expect your support because it's a moral decision. Yeah. It's time of leadership. When you do what you write, and you do go for the moral decision. And I think what we see today in Washington is a lack of leadership. Lack of leadership that is not willing to take decisions. There are a lot of nice speeches, no crippling sanctions. We want to see more. We expect more. Um, a lot of Americans don't understand Jewish people because uh, they're some of his biggest supporters. And we, we see people on television supporting the president saying, oh, no, it's fine. And you're like, wait, why should I care if you don't care? If you are saying he's fine and he's doing what he's doing, why should I lead you and say, oh, no, you should care? American voters vote for what they believe, for the values. And I think the issue of treating an ally like Israel, it, it's a value. But what I'm saying is, I agree with you. But many, if not most, Jews in America don't agree with you. Well, I'm not speaking on behalf of the American Jewry. It's about six million people. But I can tell you that when President Obama spoke about the rights of Jews to build or not to build in Jerusalem, they were not happy. All of them, liberal and conservative as one. What do you think, what do you think, the, the, he took out the Israel part, the, the Jerusalem part in the plank, and then they quickly put it in. I believe that is because they're afraid. Um, I think this, I, I personally, please dear Lord hear my prayer, um, it's going to be a landslide for Romney. Um, um, but there's a lot of people that just saw that and, and he, he was like, he came in riding on his white horse and saying, see, I care about Jerusalem. I think there's a bipartisan support for Israel. When Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke at, Washington, at the Congress, he got standing ovation from both sides. There is a great love to Israel in the American people and in the Congress. We need to see this love and action also in the White House. Can you give me any indication of how, uh, I can't really even ask this question. 
I mean, what is our timeline here? Are we talking a year from now? Are we talking any time now? Or what, that, I mean, that's a hard question. I know. But everybody asks it. So I can tell you that, Glenn. We're not talking about weeks, but also not about years. So okay. between weeks and a year, it's coming up. And I heard Colonel Dempsey and other people talking about different timelines of Israel and the U.S. So you know what? Maybe we are wrong. So it's not going to be... X amount of uh, months, it will be X plus six, but it's going to be happening I within a year. So we need to, to need to see some action coming from the U.S. as well. Okay, make make the case here in, in the last couple of seconds, um, the will to prevail. Make the case that you you have to have the will to prevail. You that you you will do that. It's important that you make whatever move it is you're going to make. make. I, history has told us that every day in Israel is a miracle. And you ask yourself, how come God gave you the strength to do so? And because we believe, and we have the, the, the determination to work and to do what we believe in. And when you look at the history of Israel, and in the book I analyze it, how come we overcame all the wars and all the obstacles? We need to believe. Because otherwise, there's no explanation. You look at the numbers of the Arabs, the amount of hatred, amount of guns, amount of money, but we're prevailing all the time because we believe. And we have friends that support us and believe with us. And I think in the bottom line of the book, many people are, uh, do not understand the Middle East, do not understand what's happening there, because it is a complex and dynamic area. But by reading the book, you get to understand what we are in Israel seeing today, that we have to do what's good for Israel, even if somebody in the U.S. do not support us on those issues, because in the long run, it will be for the benefit for the Israelis, but also for our allies in the U.S. The name of the book, Israel, The Will to Prevail, written by a good, decent, and brilliant, and brave man. Back in a minute. Thank you. Thank you.